Welcome to episode number seven, and we're right where we left off at the end of episode number six. And one of my viewers left a great comment, and it made me realize I had made a mistake on something, and I wanted to show you what that is. If I open up the industry configuration here and go to the first one that we did in the last episode, or maybe it was episode five, actually. Uh, the first one here in the LCAL 1161 was Newberry, Newberry Ballast Pit. So I was saying that you really don't need to do anything down here, and there is something else we got to do. The reason why I kind of got messed up was because when I was making videos for uh, doing just local jobs for the channel, um, I wasn't really worried about a persistent world. So I would just do the local job and then move on and create a, you know, just do a different one. But since we're creating a persistent world here for this starting from scratch series, uh, I do need to do a few things in here. So now with order builder open, I can go to manage customers and I'm going to go to Newberry ballast pit. And we just had an order for 25 empty open hoppers. So we don't have ballast hoppers, so I can take that out of here. And I'm not going to be utilizing this data for spawning trains. Um, but we do want to put stuff in here since we're doing a persistent world so that the simulator converts them to empty or loaded once the time is up. So I need to go down to these open hoppers. And I'm not going to use all these tags here. I'm just going to put barstow yard. because that's where these cars will have to go back to. So once the industry services them, and I'm just going to move this to one, it doesn't really matter because we're not utilizing this part for uh, supply train generation. We're only going to utilize, and the hours don't really matter either, be, at least for when I play, because there's so many industries that 24 hours of sim time, it's going to be probably like 200 hours of sim time before I get back to this industry, because I'm going to be doing so many other things throughout the map. So I don't really worry about it. I'll just leave it at 24. I think that's the default. Um, and then the filter here, this, I don't need to worry about this. But so the two things that I do want to make sure I've got is just put Barstow Yard in here. So after 24 hours, the cars will be tagged Barstow Yard, meaning they just got to go back to Barstow and be picked up. And then I do have to make sure that this part is correct. So if I go back to Order Builder, over here, Order Builder for Newberry Ballast Pit, they're looking for 25 empty rock hoppers, which means that it's going to be producing loads. So over here, this one is correct because it says produces loads, and that's important. So that way when I drop off the empties after 24 hours of sitting there of simulator time, it's going to load them up with rocks. So this one is now good, and I'm going to hit save at the top. Now the next one was Reox, and I guess I could transport there too. So here's Reox, and back in the order builder, I'll bring up Reox, and they had an order for seven loaded covered hoppers. So over here, let me just see what we got. We got covered hoppers, and that should be it. Yeah. And then again here, I want to just put Barstow Yard. And now this one is probably correct there. I'll just put this to one. I'll bring this back to 24 just to have some consistency, 24 hours. So this order was for seven loads, which means it's going to be producing empties. So I need to make sure that this is checked empties. I don't want it to say loads because I'm bringing loads in. They're going to empty them out. So I want empties. Now, it doesn't mean, though, that as far as I know, it's not going to mess things up if I did bring empties and I have it checked as produces empties. It would still process the cars. They'd, stay, they'd just stay empty if I dropped off empties. 24 hours later, they'd just stay empty, but they'd be tagged Barstow Yard instead of RHE. Or same thing, I think, with loads. If I had it as produces loads, if I delivered loaded cars, 
they'd just stay loaded after 24 hours and then be tagged Barstow Yard. But uh, for this case, we're bringing loads, so I want it to convert them. I want it to empty them out. This industry will empty the cars after 24 hours and then tag them Barstow Yard so they're ready to be picked up. So I'll hit save there. And then the next one... Was I think, oh, I think we skipped because we added so Hillbro's Chemicals actually be back here. That was in there. And Hill Brothers Tank Cars, we did change this, I remember when we added it in. So it just says Barstow. And did Hill Brothers three loads? So this should be empty. So I think this is where my YouTube viewer noticed in this, he was right. I made a mistake here because we're bringing loaded cars in. So I want them to be tagged Barstow Yard after 24 hours, but I need to make that produces empties because we're bringing the loads in. The industry will empty them, tag them Barstow Yard. So I'll hit save. And the last one was Tetra Technols in this local job, Tetra, Tetra Technologies. So that was also tank cars and acid tank cars. So that's right. So I'm just going to Now you could, it's up to you. If you wanted to leave the, all the tags, like we're just up here, all those different tags of off route, off map destinations, you absolutely can. I just find this is simpler and I'll figure out where to put them uh, later. And I got an idea for making a classification yard track with the industry config here for the train yard to do it there. So that way I don't really have to worry about anything except just putting what yard I want the cars to go back to once they're serviced in this specific, in each industry's configuration. So over here, I'm not, again, I'm not worried about the compa the capacity or really the hours because I'm using order builder to generate this. But over here, it's taken loads. So yeah, these need to say produces empties like that. And over here, this one produces empty. So that's good. That's what we want. So I can, that looks good. So it was Hill Bros that was messed up. I messed up that one by not clicking empties. So these are saved and that's it. So they're good. Another thing I wanted to show real quick because some people asked about it was the horns and I've got all my horns silenced here. As you can see, they all say silent, but if I click one, there's a whole bunch of, these are actually some aftermarket. These aren't the stock ones that I had downloaded, but I've just been leaving them on silent. I don't really use them because uh, I just like it nice and quiet. Uh, not that I'm against horns or anything, but it's just, it's just more peaceful when I'm playing and, and making the videos. So a few people wanted to know how I did that. So let me show you. The first thing you want to do is get a, a sound editing software. And Audacity is free. This is actually one that the Run 8 developers even recommended for editing horns. And this is what I use. You don't need anything fancy. So you can download this. And I could put a link in the description. And I actually haven't used this in a while. So I, did, I need to update it. But So then all I need to do is go to my Run 8 V3 folder and then content v3 rail vehicles sounds horns and then you'll have different labels here because these are not stock but all you got to do is just open up any any of them and i so i just right click open with and i'll choose audacity all right and now here's your horn and you can see this thing is crazy loud now to make a silent one, well, actually first, let's just, if you just wanted to turn it down, you could just use the gain here and just go negative 10 or negative 15 and then do file, save, uh, no, export audio and then choose the folder where you want to save it. And that's pretty much it. And then just hit export and it's just going to save a new wave file, but quieter. So you can mess with that. That to just turn down the volume on all your horns if you want them softer or turn it up if you want them louder. All I need to do to completely silence it is tap this top bar so it's selected and then go up to generate and then silence. And then 
all I have to do is just hit generate down here. And now this track is completely silent. And then I go to file, export audio. So I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now. And then entire project, all these should be good here. And then just hit export. And that's it. So it just saved a WAV file to the desktop. Now I'm on the desktop and here's the file that it just saved. And because this one's completely silent, I'm going to, I'm going to change. I just type in silent for the file name, and then I'm just going to cut it, go back into my horns menu and hit paste. And then we've got it right here, silent wave file. And it's in, it's got to be in your horns folder that I took you to in the beginning here so that it's with all the other horns. Then back in run eight, you can just hit hold control and hit F3. And then here's all of your horn and bell configuration. And then I, I already have mine as silent, but you should now see this silent in the list of horns. And then you can pick that. And you can even, you can have as many horns, I think, as you want. So if you want to try silent, but you also want to have your existing horns just in different volumes, you can lower the volume using that gain and then save the file with like maybe a quieter at the end of text or like maybe a dash O2 or whatever hint. So like you'd have this HOG horn here, this K5LA, but then there'd be another identical one right below it, but it would say like quieter. So you could, you know, cycle between the two and see what you like the best. I've also gotten some questions about my keyboard configuration. So I've added the key settings. This is the run eight file and the uh, PDF here that I got from the external assistant generates this nice PDF guide. So all you need to do if you want to use the key bindings that I'm using is just copy or download this run eight key settings file, then go into your run eight content and paste it right in here. Here's run eight key settings. And then it'll overwrite this file right here. But make sure you back up your original file before overwriting, just in case you want to go back to the default key settings. Also, while I'm right here, this Vernometer data XML, this will give you all the data from your single player gameplay. So for example, here it's total hours in each locomotive that I've spent. Um, there's total total hours in the sim, 1,353. Total hours as engineer, total hours stopped at a red signal, all kinds of stuff. Miles per gallon rating, fuel usage, derailments, broken couplers, shift F5s. They give you all the all that detail in case you're wondering. You can uh, find it right here in the Vernometer data file. If you're brand new to Run 8, make sure you check up at the top here what version you've got. The latest is what I've got there, V3 Update 22. June 26, 2025. If you've got an older date than that, then that means that you need to do some updating. Now, once you've run the Run 8 updater, anytime there's a future update, there's going to be a button at the top right there where that date is. I think it's a green button and it'll say update that you can click and it'll automatically download the files and update the game. But if you're new to Run8 and this is the first time you've downloaded the software and started playing, then you're going to have to install the auto updater and run it at least once manually before then it, the rest of the time after that, it'll do it automatically. On the Run8 website here, if you go to Updates and then scroll down, you'll see here it says the new Run8 V3 Update Installer app is here. Click here to get the new update app now and make sure to check out the new Run8 updater app instructions here. Inside of your Run8 v3 folder, you should have a file. You want to have this file, run8updater.exe. That's the app. But if you're not seeing it in there, that means you don't have it yet. And you want to install it and download it and install it from the Run8 website here. So if you click it, I think that'll just automatically start downloading. If I click instructions here, it brings you to the support page. And here's where it answers some questions here. The updater app uh, isn't working, or if you're getting an error, help topics, stuff like that. But it should be pretty straightforward. Once you click and download it, then all you have to do is, uh, when it's in here, is just double click it, and it's going to run the update. It's going to check with the server and 
download any files that you might be missing. That's it for this episode. Just a shorter one here, just to answer a few questions. And I wanted to point out the mistake that I had made with not checking the appropriate load produces loads or empties in the industry editor. So stay tuned for episode eight. And I think our next episode is going to be working the local job, the LCAL 1161, which will be in a separate series. So stay tuned.